In this video, we'll discuss the pressure in a fluid. By definition, pre uh, pressure is the force applied perpendicular to the surface of an object per unit area. Suppose we have the fluid inside the container. Now, this fluid always exert a force on any plane surface. And that force is perpendicular to that area. So, therefore, uh, this force, this area, experience a force coming from the fluid. So, we have this, the force, which is perpendicular to the area and it is concentrated at the center of gravity now if we divide this force perpendicular force by the area then the result is pressure okay and this pressure is actually uh, applied to any portion of the area a now there is a unit of force remember that it is newton okay and then the area is uh, surface area is a meter per meet uh, square meter then uh, therefore the unit becomes newton meter square so the pressure becomes newton per meter square so, but the one newton per meter square is one pascal or in symbol we have one p a so the unit is a unit of pressure is pascal now if we take the diagonal product we can we can solve for the value of the force and this force is actually the product of the pressure times the area so therefore knowing calculating the force perpendicular to the area is just the product of the pressure and its surface area now remember that the earth exerts the earth at a surface experience a pressure coming from the atmosphere so we have the atmospheric pressure in symbol a lowercase of p sub a now take note that please do not confuse that the unit of of the pressure is p sub p a now this is a big letter capitalized p and we have letter a while atmospheric pressure is a small letter p sub a okay so the one atmosphere or one atm is equivalent to 1013 times 10 raised to 5 pascal and this is also equal to 1.013 bars, which is equal to 1,013 millibars. And in English system, the atmospheric pressure is just equal to 14.7 uh, pound per square foot. And these are the different units of the uh, pressure. But in this I, the pressure is in Pascal. There are also other units like psi psi means pound per square inch it is also a unit of uh pressure but it belongs to the english system okay now if we consider an element volume inside the uh fluid in horizontal orientation while the area the the the, the surface area is facing up or down then this element volume experience a pressure coming from the coming from the fluid okay now uh the thickness of this element is a very very small okay this is a very very small representing dy so the infinitesimal thickness multiplied by the area is actually the volume the element volume the volume of the element inside the uh the fluid now remember that oh, suppose the element is located above the horizontal let us say at any point let us say y so this is the location of the element volume now remember that the element volume has a weight we have the gravitational force which is an infinitesimal weight so dw because this is an in infinitesimal volume now aside from the force on the element which is its own weight this element experience a force coming from the uh, fluid on the bottom face of the element and this is equivalent to the product of the pressure times the area so the pressure at the bottom of the element multiplied by the area is the force applied upward it is a positive force 
while weight is downward in our Corinthians, our Cartesian. Now, aside from that, the upper uh, part of the fluid experience act, uh, uh, apply the force on the element in the downward direction. So, the the force is equivalent to the pressure plus the infinitesimal pressure because we have the thickness. So, therefore, the pressure at the bottom is different from the pressure above. So, representing the infinitesimal pressure. So, the P plus the change in P or the infinitesimal P times the area is the force on the element applied on the upper portion of the uh, fluid. So, there are three forces acting on this element volume. Now, if we take summation of forces, the sum should be zero because the element is static. This is at rest position. So, we will sum up all the forces and there are three forces of this. We have the upward force which is the product of the pressure at the bottom times the area of the element. Then, subtracted by the gravitational force which is the infinitesimal weight and it is downward direction and subtracted also the other force which is the force on the fluid applying to the top uh, of the or the upper part of the element volume and it has it is equal to a negative force downward which is the quantity p plus dp times the area so these three forces must be equated to zero okay now remember that weight gravitational force is this is dw so what is dw now we have to recall the the definition of density density remember is uh equal to the mass of our volume if we solve for the mass in terms of the density it is the product of the density times its volume now if we multiply this equation by the gravitational acceleration both sides then we have the mass times gravity which is equivalent to rho g v rho means the density g means the acceleration v means the volume now remember that the mass times gravity is the weight so in other words if we are calculating the weight of the fluid we can do uh, we can use this formula so we just multiply the density of that fluid by the gravitational acceleration and multiplied its volume and the result is weight so in other words the dw now the d the infinitesimal the infinitesimal uh weight is just equal to what is equal to the density of the the object or the fluid times the gravitational acceleration times the infinitesimal volume okay so this will becomes the density the gravity times the infinitesimal volume representing the gravitational force of the element applied or oh, applied force or this is the weight of the infinitesimal volume now remember volume means what volume is the product of the surface area and its thickness so therefore this will becomes root z a times dy remember a is the area dy is the thickness of the element now take note that there are three terms and each term contains area so therefore if we divide both sides by area area can be cancelled out so leaving this equation okay now if we remove the grouping symbol then we can notice that the pressure can be eliminated so we have this result now solving dp with respect to dy the result becomes dp dy is equal to rho gb now what's the meaning of this the meaning of this is if if the height y increases coming from the reference line if it is has an increasing value then pressure decreases which means that the pressure above the line is less than compared to the lower line if the line increases if the, if the height increases pressure decreases so in contrast if the if the height decreases its amount then pressure increases this is inversely proportional this is the meaning of dp uh d uh, divided um per dy is equal to rho 
rho rho g rho means the density g means the gravitational acceleration now solving for dp this result this equation now becomes becomes dp is equal to negative rho g dy which means that if we have a point on the surface of the water let us say uh it has a pressure of b1 then we have the height coming from the reference line now suppose suppose we want to know how much pressure at point two at a distance y2 the answer is we can work on this we can work on this equation Okay. Now, take the integral of this. Apply the limit. Apply the limit of, of the initial pressure. This is the initial pressure P1. And this is the final. So, the integral of the infinitesimal pressure having a limit of P1 to P2. While in the other side, because we are integrating both sides, so the integral sign must have the limit of the uh y because this is the infinitesimal value dy so the 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 limit should be in terms of y so the 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 limit is coming from y1 to y2 now evaluating this integral this will result p2 minus p1 which is equal to negative rho g y2 minus y1 now remember that take note this one y1 is greater than y2 which means that the difference the y2 minus y1 is a negative value i will let that value be equal to negative h so therefore the y2 minus y1 is the change in position of the point from 1 to 2 and it has the value of a negative number which is uh, representing negative h so if we substitute this h value to this result then it will provide an answer of p2 minus p1 which is equal to rho g h now transposing the p1 to the other side we can always solve the final pressure so the final pressure p2 is the sum of p1 plus rho g h which means that if you know how the pressure at this point you can always calculate the pressure at the other at any point provided that it has the distance coming from the reference line so it is just equal to the sum of p1 plus rho gh now remember the rho gh is the pressure in the fluid now since suppose the fluid is water then this must be the density of the water and this is the acceleration this must be the height the change in position or the height above the above the point of interest or it can be below okay so meaning uh p1 p2 is greater pressure compared to p1 by how much by rho g h so notice that the lower part of the fluid have greater pressure compared to the upper level of the uh, fluid why because remember that the y if y increases pressure decreases so therefore if if because this y is take note the change in y is negative so the pressure must be increases now in contrast if we have to determine how much is the pressure above point one then the resulting the resulting uh pressure must be less than compared to p2 why because in this case our height is what greater than zero meaning the height now is a positive result so therefore it will be subtracted here so the result must be a negative uh, uh, a less than a number to the initial pressure okay so then uh suppose we know this pressure then let that be equal to p sub not p not or the initial or the reference pressure so if we let p1 be a reference pressure 
reference means we know that pressure then we can always find the pressure at any point in the fluid let us say p so suppose the the difference in height between p naught and p is h then we can calculate for p which is equal to what p naught plus rho g h which h means uh, the pressure at the bottom is just the sum of the in reference pressure plus the rho the, the this is the pressure of the of the fluid above so all you need to do is to substitute the value of the density of this fluid with the acceleration and its height then added by the reference pressure so this is actually the general formula for finding the pressure in a fluid okay now uh, remember that the earth the earth as atmosphere exert a pressure on the surface of the earth so if the location of the particle is located near the surface of the earth then all particles must be ex must experience the atmospheric pressure it is the uh, actually the pressure or the force applied on the upper part of our surface area or of the of the earth surface so therefore at the top of the fluid because this is open if this is open then this must be atmospheric so therefore if we let this be equal to our reference point no reference pressure re uh, replacing if not then the pressure is actually called as the absolute pressure so if you if you add the atmospheric by the rho gs or the pressure applied in the fluid we call that as the absolute pressure so to a certain height then we can say that the absolute pressure is just equal to the sum of the atmospheric plus the rho gh where the rho gh again is the pressure applied by the fluid okay now remember rho gh we can call this as gauge pressure so pg re uh, represents the gauge pressure which is equivalent to the rho gh or the pressure in the fluid so therefore the absolute pressure is the sum of the atmospheric plus the gauge pressure so again the p sub eb is the absolute pressure then the p a sub a is the atmospheric pressure which is constant and the, the the pg means the gauge pressure this is the gauge pressure which is equivalent to the rho gh and take note this rho must be what must be the density of the fluid and acceleration and this it must be the height the difference between the height of the point of interest so if you are asked to calculate the absolute pressure your gauge pressure must be added by atmospheric if you remove the atmospheric then the result is just equal to the gauge pressure which means that the absolute pressure is more than atmospheric pressure okay more than an amount of the atmospheric pressure okay so uh consider this container with an open no? so we have this uh two compartments but they are connected okay they are connected by this inlet okay uh, uh part so it has this is at least diameter compared to the other compartment and this is open to atmosphere so if we uh fit in a fluid then look at the label the label of the fluid actually the the, the label are the same okay why because in this case the surface is atmospheric pressure so the pressure here must be the same to the other compartment so if this is 1.013 for the atmospheric pressure this is also 1.013 times 10 to 5 pascal which is the atmospheric pressure the constant okay now take note of the principle that the same level must have the same pressure so 
if you know the pressure at this point it is just the same to all points with the same level so therefore because this is in the same line then pressure must be the same take note the same level have the same pressure now the pascal's law says that for a closed container the pressure applied to any closed fluid is transmitted and diminished to every portion of the fluid and the walls of the containing vessel means if we have a closed container like this no? you can imagine this is a solid an object and it was uh close the the the, the it has a gas inside and this is a closed container so according to the pascal's law the pressure is undiminished and they are the same equal equal pressure magnitude pressure to all to all what the uh, walls of the containing vessel so meaning if you know the pressure here if you know the pressure at this point it is just the same at the pressure to other point so this pressure in the wall in the containing vessel must have the same pressure regardless of the position regardless of height and and distances pressure in a closed container pressure are the same so aside from this principle that the same level have the same pressure another principle according to the pascal's law in a closed container pressure of the gas are the same okay so therefore look at this one if we have this as a fluid and we uh place a piston piston means it is a device that allows to uh allows to keep the gas inside meaning we all gases cannot escape because we have this piston it is a kind of material that is ability to trap the fluid so if we have this piston in the other compartment and another piston to another compartment now take note that the this piston has a lesser area compared to the piston on the right side so therefore the fluid was trapped in the uh, container now in this case if we have this we call this as the hydraulic machine okay now if we have this car and we have this little boy on the other side then this little boy can push the car why because of the principle of the hydraulic machine now take note that meaning this boy can have have the ability to push this car upward or push uh move this car downward depending on its applied force so if, if he applies a lesser amount of force then therefore the car must go down but if this boy exert a force on the lower part then he can push the car upward okay this is the principle of hydraulic machine and the hydraulic machine actually applies the pascal's law now how it happens now remember that if we have this object the ma uh, the, the boy at the left side ex uh, exert a force with a piston okay a boy and a piston exert a force on the fluid okay on the left left uh compartment having a surface area let us say a1 surface area in contact with the fluid on the other side on the left side right side the car and it's the piston also exert a force on the fluid downward and it has a greater area so this force obviously they are different in magnitude so sir uh obviously this force is lesser compared to the force if two now remember that in a uh, pascal's law the force on the closed container are the same the pressure the pressure on the closed container are the same so it is undiminished so every portion of the fluid so all all surface area actually are subjected with this pressure so whatever pressure here the same pressure at this point now and the question is how much force uh applied with the fluid to the piston apply this force p1 so therefore in order to to stay this point at rest then there must be a force on the fluid exerted upward so the force is actually the pressure which is this one the yellow arrow 
the pressure multiplied by the area of the piston in the left member. So, multiplying the two, the result must be the force in upward direction. Okay? Now, in the other, in the left or the right uh, compartment, the upward force, which is actually uh, pushing up to the car, is the pressure times the area of the left compartment or the right compartment. It has a greater area compared to E1. Okay, so therefore, now take note if this uh, piston is in static condition, so therefore, this force must be the same, meaning the F1 must be equal to the pressure times E1, while this one, F2, must be equal to the pressure times E2. Now take note of force, pressure times E2. Okay. Now take note that this pressure this pressure is the same okay now if we solve the pressure in terms of if one and e1 pressure is equal to if one over e1 while if the pressure at the other compartment pressure is if two over e2 now if we equate these two because they are equal these equations are the same so therefore we can equate the two then we can say that if 2 over E1 is just equal, if 1 over E1 is just equal to if 2 over E2. Which means that if we want to know how much force applied in order to push this uh, car upward or move downward, then we can solve for if 1. So this is now the relation between the two. So therefore, if 1 is the product of if 2 multiplied by the ratio of E1 over E2. Take note, this is lesser in amount compared to this one so therefore this result this uh, factor is great must be less than one in order to what in order to have a lesser amount of force meaning if if you want if if, if you want a, a smaller value of force then you have to increase the area on the on the compartment in the uh, right compartment of the fluid so if you increase and increase this will become this will decrease okay which means that increasing this amount is actually resulting a number which is less than one so if you decrease this one if you decrease the pressure the area surface area in the right compartment then you are increasing the forces the force on the if one the force that the buoy exerts on that so the strategy in the hydraulic machine in order to have a lesser amount of input force is an input no and this must be the output force in order to reduce the input force we have to increase the area of the piston in the right side okay so this is the principle of the hydraulic machine so in that case uh, the boy can control whether it pushes up the car or maybe pushes down okay so depending on the depending on what depending on the ratio between a1 and a2 and you can you have this uh, control force so this is actually one of the application of the pascal's law Pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted and diminished every portion of the fluid and the walls of the containing vessel. Okay, now let's have the example or the problems in the fluid, pressure in a fluid. So suppose we have a tank, an open tank. Now we want to know what are the pressures in the fluid of different layer of fluids, different layers. So suppose we have the, the first layer, the, the bottom part of the the tank contains fresh water or the water now take note that water has a density of 1 times 10 raised to 3 pascal or 1000 pascals now if we mix oil to this tank then take note that the oil is less than compared to the water which means that oil will float onto water surface so therefore it creates interface here so they cannot be mixed why because oil has lesser density 
than the water so the lesser density always float to the greater density okay now the question is oh by the way if, if the height of the water is two meters and the height of the oil is 1.5 meters these are the questions letter a calculate or what is the gauge pressure remember gauge pressure at the oil water interface so the this line no? then letter b how much is the absolute pressure at the bottom of the tank what is the absolute pressure at the bottom of the tank so these are the questions that uh you might be encountering in 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 everyday life no so to answer this problem letter a the oil water interface take note that this is the oil water interface is the line so you are asked to how much the pressure at that level so then you have to use take note no we have to use these formulas so since the question is the gauge number so therefore we will be using this formula so gauge pressure gauge pressure so all you need to do is now is what to to answer the problem what is the gauge pressure at the interface we need the density of oil okay which is this formula then the earth's gravitational acceleration and the height of the oil and the height of the oil remember is 1.5 so substituting the values and take note that the density of oil is 0.8 times 10 raised to 3 this is the value multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and this is the height of the oil remember because we are asked what is the pressure it should be the height above this line so the the the, the height must be 1.5 and that is only for oil so calculating this value the result is what 11.77 times 10 raised to 3 or this is 11,770 pascals which is equivalent to 11.77 kilo pascal and this is the answer for letter a now for letter b you are asked to find what the absolute pressure at the bottom of the where's the bottom the bottom is here okay now take note that same level of the same pressure so therefore at any point at this level the absolute pressure are the same so calculating the absolute pressure take note that we will be using this formula this formula so the absolute pressure must be what the atmospheric plus the gauge pressure so remember atmospheric is constant and this is 1.013 times in rest of 5 while the, the 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 gauge pressure is what the gauge pressure must be what the sum of the uh, pressure applied by the oil and the pressure applied by the water so they must be added so this one this one be the gauge pressure of the oil and this is the gauge pressure of the water so they must be added and the sum must be added to the atmospheric to obtain the absolute pressure so calculating the values substituting the values we have the 1.013 times to 5 for the for the absolute pressure atmospheric pressure then added by what the density of oil which is 0 0.5 0 0.8 times the of 3 multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and it's the height of the oil plus the 1 times 10 raised to 3 the density of the water or the 1000 multiplied by the acceleration 9.81 multiplied by the height of the the column or the the height of the water which is 2 meters so with this Calculating the result is 132.7 times 10 raised to 3 pascals. Okay, or this is equivalent to 132.7 kilo pascal. And this is the answer. This is the right answer. No? You have to use the prefix in order to provide a lesser amount of number. So these are the answers to the problem. Okay, let's proceed to the next problem. Problem number two. This is problem on the open manometer, or we call this as. Oh, by the way, this is a. This is not an open manometer. This is a tube, J tube, no? J tube. So it, this is a J tube because this is closed. Open manometer means all all man, manometers, uh, all ends are exposed to atmosphere. So the, we can call this as a J tube problem. Okay, now if we insert or or feed in the mercury mercury fluid in in a j tube take note that the air on the left uh the left end of the j tube this is a close no so therefore the air must be compressed so therefore this 
this surface now is not an atmospheric pressure because this is not exposed on the atmosphere but this one this must be atmospheric so we can we can uh, uh, actually observe that the level of this mercury are indifferent why because they have different pressure here so this is atmospheric while this one is non-atmospheric and obviously this is more than atmospheric okay so if if this if this uh glass uh exposed to the atmosphere then this mercury will actually level will increase so it will move away from the the device so in this case the mercury was trapped in this position in a form of z so the this one actually apply the atmospheric pressure applies here downward and this one the pressure in the compressed air apply the force at this level so what are the questions no by the way this is this should be the mercury and the mercury must have a density of 13.6 so then go back to your to your previous uh topic so the the 13.6 is the density of the mercury we will be we are using the mercury because the mercury is a liquid metal so it is a good for 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 tubing no? for for uh this kind of problem so this is in atmospheric pressure while this one is this is actually a compressed air so we have the pressure in air and this is pressure atmospheric or atmospheric pressure now what are the questions by the way if this is four centimeters above the bottom part of the g tube then we have this seven centimeters in height so there's this greater this is greater than four centimeter now the question says letter a what is the pressure at three centimeter below the open tube so this is the open open this is open so the question is how much the pressure three centimeter below so take note the three centimeter because this is seven and this is three so therefore this must be the three centimeter okay from from this line so letter b you are asked to find the pressure at the bottom of the j tube so what letter c how much is the pressure uh, what is the pressure of the compressed air so there are three questions first you are, are, are you are asked to find the pressure at three centimeter below the open and a pressure at the bottom then what is the pressure in the compressed air so how to answer this problem to answer is we have to use the principle that we derive the formulas okay now take note that uh in letter a you're asked to find the pressure so from because this is given as the atmospheric then oh, obviously the question is not just a pressure it is an absolute pressure because we we are given this atmospheric pressure now if there is no atmospheric pressure stated here then we can ignore the, and then it's it the question now is talking about the gauge pressure but this one this is by common sense you are calculating the absolute pressure so you have to add the atmospheric so to answer is remember that this is the point this is the point that uh letter a asks how much is the pressure at that point so to answer it should be what the atmospheric pressure pre pressure plus the uh pressure from this point above so you have to find the pressure on this fluid whose height is whose height is 3 centimeters so to answer is it should be what 1.013 times raised to 5 pascal plus pro gh the density must be the density of the mercury and this is acceleration again and this is the height the height is 3 centimeter so calculating substituting the values this must be what 13.6 times 10 raised to 3 as the uh, for the mercury this is 9.81 and this is 3 centimeter the 3 centimeter is equivalent to 0 0.03 meter so you have to convert this because of consistency for have to obtain a consistency everything must be converted into is i so therefore the result is will automatically result pascal pressure provide the pascal so calculate this is 105.3 times 10 to 3 pascals so this is the answer for letter a now for later by the way equivalent to 105.3 kilo pascals letter b letter b what is the pressure at the bottom so uh, the question now is at the bottom how much is the pressure at the bottom the j tube so take note that this level or this point is actually 
has a height of 7 centimeters from the open tube so to answer because uh we have the atmospheric still this is an absolute pressure so you have to add the atmospheric plus the column of the mercury so the mercury column is not actually the length of the tube it is the height no take note do not follow the curve you have because the the our previous derivation is we are talking about the height it should be the height not the length okay so then substitute the value still we are working with mercury so the only difference in letter b from a is only the what the height so previously three but now it is what, seven centimeters so you have to change it with, with zero point seven meter okay so then substitute calculate the result is 110.64 times 10 raised to 3 pascals so which is equivalent to 110.64 kilopascals now in the final question letter c you are asked to find how much is the pressure how much is the pressure in the compressed air Kini, this one was being asked what is the pressure in the air so to answer this question letter c now take note now we have to use the principle of what the principle of leveling right? same level have the same pressure which means that whatever pressure here take note will be the same because these they are the same level why because this is seven and this is four so the pressure here must be the same at this point so therefore we know the pressure here now take note this is a closed container so applying the pascal's law the pressure this is a closed right? this is a closed vessel so pressure here must the same and diminish the whole portion of the containing vessel a closed container so therefore to answer letter c it's no calculus no calculation happen it is just a justification using our principle that the same level that the same principle uh, the same pressure then using the the pascal's law then the answer the pressure the air the compressed air is equal to p since the p is in our in our letter a is 105.3 kilopascals then the pressure air also is 1.05.3 kilopascals so these are the answers to the problem okay so that's it thank you for for listening